I'm David Craig. I'm just back from a hard day of toad ranching. Bet you're wondering how we ranch toads around these parts. Well, stay tuned for this video and find out. The Rhode Island Natural History Survey presents videos to showcase the animals, plants, geology, and natural systems that surround us, and the people and organizations working to understand and conserve them. The Eastern Spadefoot Toad is Rhode Island's rarest amphibian. Spadefoot adults spend most of their lives in forests, burrowed into the sandy soil to keep moist and hide from snakes, birds, or other predators. But to breed, they need shallow, sunlit pools, vernal pools that are filled by spring rains and then dry up within six to eight weeks. The drying up part may seem weird for an amphibian, but spadefoot eggs and tadpoles are easy pickings for fish, crayfish, and dragonfly larvae. So the toads select only the most ephemeral pools, ones where drying episodes prevent establishment of these predators. Spadefoots have special adaptations that allow their larvae to grow, metamorphose, and hop on out of the pool in record short time for an amphibian. During the height of Rhode Island's agricultural past, meadow pools near woods were relatively common and toads were more widely distributed. Ditching, groundwater withdrawal, forest succession, development, and increased mesopredators all have taken their toll. For the last couple of years, a half dozen organizations and agencies, Operation Spadefoot Rhode Island, have been collaborating to build new vernal pools specially designed to suit spadefoots. If we're successful, spadefoots may come back from the brink in Rhode Island. I'm Tom Beebe Kauser. I work as a wildlife biologist and a wetland ecologist, and I'm happy to be uh, returning to Rhode Island to help build vernal pools or ephemeral wetlands for the eastern spadefoot. This is a unique project. I've worked as a wildlife biologist for over 42 years, and it is a rare day when you can find a way to help endangered species. The eastern spadefoot is most uncommon. People will go their entire lives without seeing or hearing one. We have an opportunity today to return habitat for the eastern spadefoot, to provide it with breeding habitat, to bring back the species that is so close to being extirpated in Rhode Island. These will be shallow depressions, just 8 to 12 inches deep and about 40 feet wide. Food grade waterproof liner with layers of protective fabric top and bottom is stretched across the bowl so it will hold water. Volunteers recruited from URI, the South Kingstown Land Trust, and elsewhere help handle the heavy liner and spread the soil. Ten inches of soil is spread on top of the liner carefully so as not to punch any holes. Okay. 
At the end, the excavator gently fluffs up the soil around the pool that its tracks had just compressed. Volunteers spread straw and rye seed to hold the soil until everything settles down. So all the branches need to go the edge of the spoon out to the edge of the uh, straw. Lastly, dead sticks and logs around the outside provide shelter for spadefoots moving to and from the pool. So someone is here that I met that thinks she found some, and so I, it's possible I looked at them, the shape of the egg mass looks right, but I just told her that the are going to put their own dog in page 13 or so, I can tell when the tadpoles get that way, if it's a space or not, but I can't tell what it is inside the egg. Okay. It's about the same size. The uh, strands, they're kind of ribbon-like, yeah, hanging yeah. strands that are, they're not like a wood frog egg mass. If you'd like to learn more about spadefoots and restoration efforts in southern New England, join the Natural History Survey on Thursday, April 29th at 7 o'clock for a lecture by Ian Ives of Massachusetts Audubon. Ian's been working on spadefoot restorations in southeastern Massachusetts for the last 11 years, and he'll talk about what they've done, what successes and failures they've had, and uh, what their hopes are for the future. Natural History Survey videos are made possible through the generous contributions of members and friends. Want to help us do more environmental science and conservation? Hit the like button, share our videos with your circle, subscribe, or make a financial contribution on our website, ranhs.org, or through Patreon. Thanks, and see you out there.